Hello, it's Gem Games, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create this super efficient grid blueprint component that will not use any extra actors or anything like that. This is just a simple code that will check which part of the grid is the closest, and it will move, uh, for example, in this case, it will move the box where the mouse is, but according to the grid, like this, as you can see. So yeah. Let's get started. So yeah, I have this uh, top-down, empty top-down template project here. So I will go to the top-down folder and to the blueprints. And I will actually create a new folder to here. I will call it components. Okay. Then I will open it and I will actually create a new blueprint class. And the type is actor component. Okay, I will call this PPC grid like that. Okay, let's open it. So this will be the grid component that we will have to add to every actor that wants to use the grid system. So yeah. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to actually create a function. And we want to call it get grid location. Okay, let's open it. We want to add a input to here. And we want the type to be vector. And let's change the name to location. Let's split this vector. Okay, now we have to create a new variable type float. And we want to call this grid size. Okay, let's compile and let's make the grid size default value 100. Okay, now what we want to do first with this location. So basically, if we are like, if we have some code that when we move the mouse here, it will check the location under the mouse. Okay, so that location under the mouse will be its input here. What we have to do here is first we want to get the grid size. And we want to subtract from the location x. And also we want to subtract from the location y. And what we want to su subtract from here is we want to subtract the grid size divided by two, okay? So, like this. Okay, and after that, what we want to do, we want to get the grid size again. We want to divide these values. So, let's divide the x value. Let's also copy this and divide the y, uh, y value with the grid size. So what this does is, for example, if we have our mouse pointing at, for example, some like, like this point, uh, let's say that it's 100, uh, 1000 units from the, uh, on the X and 1000 on the Y, or yeah, something like that. What this will do, it will divide the grid size which in this case is 100, it will divide it by two, so it's 50. It will minus that from the 1000 of the value that we had here, where the mouse is. And after that, it will divide the value 950, 950 with the grid size, which, which is 100. So after that, it will be 9.5 on the boat. Okay, after that, what we want to do, we want to round it x value and also we want to round the y value. So now they're rounded to the uh, closest full number. So in this case I think it will round it to the 10 from the 9.5. Okay and after that what we want to do we want to turn these values uh, back to float. So to float this 
And after that, what we want to do, we want to get the grid size again. And we want to actually multiply this value with the grid size. Also multiply this y value with the grid size. So what we are basically doing here is we are, uh, for example, if our mouse is on the position of like 960 and 960, it will, this code will turn it to 1000. Okay, and if it's on 940, 940, it will make it uh, 900 and 900. Okay, and after that, what we want to do, we want to divide this grid again by two, and we want to add this to these values. So let's add here also. So we are basically adding back the whole value of the grid size, what we add subtract here on the start. Okay. And after that, what we want to do, we want to make a vector like this. And we want to connect the x to x and y to y. And after that, we want to get the return node. Let's actually connect it to the, to here. Actually, I think we want to move all this code a little bit further down. Let's also align all this code a little bit better. So let's select all these and press Q like that. Okay, now let's move the return value a little bit further. Let's move this to here. Let's add here a an output. And the output should be called location on grid. And now let's just connect this value to here. Okay. Now let's compile and save. So what we want to do now is let's go to the blueprints folder and to the top down controller. I will show you what it actually does. So let's, for example, first let's get the event tick. You don't have to do this, I will just show you. Then we want to get location under cursor, like this. Let's add a branch to here. Let's check the hit. And if we have a hit, we want to just print string, and I will show you. Now, if we connect this straight to here, we set the time to zero, I will show you. It will show here on the screen the position of the mouse, but it will show the exact position. It is not using the grid. So how we can use the grid now is we want to add the BBC grid to here. And we want to run the, this code or this location through the BBC grid uh, function. So we want to get the get grid location, okay? And actually, we want to go back to the VPC grid and we want to make this get grid, get grid location function, we want to make it as pure, like that. Compile and let's go back. Now let's compile, it will actually, it doesn't work like that. We will have to get it again, so get grid location. Now it's per, pure, I don't know how to pronounce that. Now if we run this code through the this and connect to here. I will show you what happens. Now it gets the closest part of the grid, basically. So I will show you if we add here a, let's just quickly create a simple blueprint actor. Let's call this cube. Let's just add here a cube. Okay, it's like that. And let's set the uh, collision to no collision, just to show you guys. So now if we go back to the PPC, uh, sorry, PP top down controller, and here on the, let's move this a little bit further right. Here on the begin play, we want to actually spawn that cube. So 
one actor from class. Let's get the cube. Uh, always spawn in our collisions and return value. Let's promote this to a variable. Let's rename it cube ref like that. And here we can delete this print string now. What we want to do now is we want to get the cube ref and we want to set world location. This. Now if we set this, connect this location on grid to the new location, I will show you what happens. So why did we get an error? Let's see. Won't transfer. Oh, so yeah, yeah, sorry. We will have to actually split this. So after that, it should work. Okay. Now, if we play, you can see the box is following the grid. And we can actually make the grid size as whatever we want. So let's make the grid size 50. So the grid will be half of the size as before. As you can see. But now we have some problems with the offset. So how we can fix that? I will show you. Here we want to add a variable called grid offset. And we want to change the type to vector like that. Now we have to add this offset, this code. So here, after we subtract the grid size divided by two, we want to add the, sorry, uh, subtract the grid offset. So let's get the grid offset. Let's split it. And let's subtract again from here. On both X and Y. So X to the X, Y to the Y, like that. And I will actually align this again, like that. And now we also have to add the offset back here at the end. So uh, after this make vector, we want to add and we want to connect this to the location of grid, and we want to add this grid offset, so like this. Now, if we play, we have this offset problem that it's at 25 units on the wrong place, so we can fix it now by setting the grid offset to 25, 25, and I actually think it should be minus 25, but let's see. Yeah, it's not. Actually, it's working. Yeah, as you can see now, the grid size is half of the what it was before. So now it's 25. And obviously, you can set this grid size to like 200 if you want. Let's set the grid offset back to zero. So now, should jump 200 units. Yeah like that. And now actually the offset should be 50. Now you can see the grid size is 200. Okay. And how you can use this with your own game is you just have to go to whatever actor you want to use the grid. So for example, your player, you want to go in this case, I'm using the top-down project, so I want to go to my player controller. And here you have to add the PPC grid. And you just do like I did. You just run the code through this. So normally when you are setting the location, you will just run it through this get grid location and connect that to the location that you really want to set. So yeah, people ask that. So yeah, I think that was all for this video. If you liked what you saw, please click the like button and subscribe for more. And yeah, hope you have a great day and see you in the next one. Bye.